This Cartoon Network Halloween special that was released in 2004 is the cream of the crop when it comes to fever dream movies. One time I took two Benadryls, fell asleep, and I had dreams about this film. Know that I'm not joking around. This isn't a joking matter. We're not here to laugh. We're not here to have fun. We're here to have a... We're here to have a serious conversation about the film Scary Godmother. Scary Godmother is a series of comic and children's books written by a certain Jill Thompson. Everyone say thank you, Jill. Thank you, Jill. Jill is so important, not only because she was the writer of the books, but also she's a major reason why the movies look the way they do. I said movies, there's two, but we're only talking about one today. Scary Godmother is like your fairy godmother, but for Halloween. There's nothing really scary about the scary godmother. She's fun, macabre. Oh. Hey girl, what? Macabre. Reminiscent of childhood with a little bit of social commentary mixed in. Hold the phone, we're about to have a little bit of fun. Remember earlier when I said that we're actually be very serious and we're not gonna have any fun? We're still gonna be very serious, of course, but we are gonna have a little bit of fun. That was me being a little bit sarcastic, a little bit of a sarcastic lassie. Some people call me that sometimes. No one's ever actually said that, I just made that up. All my sarcastic lassies in chat, put your paws up. Keep those paws up very high. I had a ginger ale. I'm acting like I just took 10 shots of... Jill's goal for Scary Godmother was to make something young readers and adults could enjoy. So kind of like the Shrek effect here. Scary Godmother was made by Mainframe Entertainment. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Probably not. But they made all of the early Barbie movies, including my absolute favorite film from childhood, Barbie and the Nutcracker. The connections are endless. Everything is connected. There is no such thing as a coincidence. It's funny to mention this because you recognize, wait a minute, Scary Godmother looks nothing like the early Barbie movies. Why is that? Well, one, they used a new form of CGI, and two, the original goal was actually that the film was gonna be more of like an animated watercolor. Very cool, but Jill was like, let's make the characters 3D. Let's make the backgrounds watercolor 2D. Isn't that interesting? By God, Jill, it was. So now we have two plus two, and now we're gonna equal four. Scary Godmother. I could probably do an entire lecture alone on the opening shot of this movie. We're being told to buckle up. We have this man here with what I can assume is a child and he's heel walking. Like I've never seen anyone heel walk in their life. I'd hate to be that man's downstairs neighbor. That felt like a very millennial joke. So this man is stomping so hard on the ground that his feet are actually morphing into the sidewalk. <laughs> and then what I can also only assume is a transformer cooking, just running as fast as humanly possible on the sidewalk as well. This is a busy sidewalk. The mindset that I wanna prime your brain for for the rest of this viewing is that AI probably could have made this movie, but it didn't. People made this movie. There were people making decisions about every piece of this movie, including this. A person decided this and that's beautiful. We follow this yellow haired fella named Daryl and he's running around with the most yellow hair I've ever seen. Now I know it's Halloween, so I would give him a pass to be like, oh, it's part of his costume, except it's not. I truly believe the color scientist at French's was watching this movie, saw Daryl's hair, was like, get out the color dropper. We found our mustard yellow. You're late. I'm sitting alone in a cemetery and you... Daryl, are you a piece of candy? Yeah, cool, huh? You may be thinking, who is this diva? This is Katie. And I really love that she's Katie because she is the most Katie Katie I've ever seen in my life. Everything about the cat costume, the voice, the hair, everything about her screams that she's a Katie. And Daryl just looks like he should be Ginger, but isn't. I can't get over that kid's hair. <coughs> this is Bert. I've never seen a young boy put so much effort and thought into his costume, so therefore he is my favorite character in this entire movie. I'm a baseball player in his SUV. It's loaded with all the options, including anti-lock brakes and an atomic powered laser cannon. So the kids are waiting for a certain Jimmy, but something's watching them, creeping around the corner. Speak of the devil, and the devil shall appear. Oh, it is Jimmy. That's Jimmy. So Jimmy is a devil, and he's also blonde. You see what I mean here? How they could do blonde. So why did they make Daryl's hair so yellow? And Jimmy is babysitting his little cousin, Hannah, who has this music play every time we get a shot of Hannah <laughs> to emphasize the fact that she is a little baby princess. <laughs> Hannah brought Jimmy and all of his friends full-size candy bars. That's how I know Hannah is rich. Hannah is wealthy. Jimmy is kind of the worst. 
I can get my own Halloween candy. I don't need any baby's help. Jimmy's friends are pretty nice to Hannah, initially, at least. Including Katie, like, she's actually really sweet. I like your fairy princess wings. Aren't they cool? I don't understand why Jimmy and all his friends have the same eyes, which are dots. Hannah has, like, these big eyes. This was an AI movie, I think. That's a dumb choice. But because people made it, I said there's an intention here. It's probably to emphasize Hannah's innocence as a young child. Or they just wanted to be like, she's the main character, let's make her look better. Probably. <laughs> Monsters! 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 The most important character trait of Hannah throughout this entire movie is that she is terrified of monsters. Jimmy tells Hannah that she could actually scare monsters with her flashlight and sends her off into the cemetery alone. We're gonna ditch Hannah. <gasps> She's kind of slow. And this is where I was a little shocked because I thought the friends would be like, no, let's not ditch her, Jimmy. That's insane. It's not that big of a deal if she comes with us. But instead, they were all kind of like, yeah, let's ditch her. Yeah, let's scare her, traumatize her, and leave her. And so we can get as much candy as possible. You want to be a big kid, right? Right. Well, if you're a big kid, you won't be afraid to trick or treat the spook house. <laughs> Jimmy's character design specifically is so cemented into my brain. It was actually sort of genius with the low effort devil costume. And also he's got those mean eyebrows. Every year, the new kid has to leave candy in the basement of the abandoned spook house to keep the monsters from eating every kid in the world. And all of this time could have been spent trick or treating. Jimmy doesn't even expect her to walk in, but she does. And they start making these really intricate hand shadows. You guys need to go on tour. That witch is so detailed. You better hurry, Hannah. Get to the basement and throw some candy down there. Sending her to the basement, honestly, one of the scariest things that could happen to me now. She's trying to get out and run home. <laughs> they lock her inside. I don't know what I would do. So she's freaking out and crying as she should be. Oh my God, who arrives? Everyone's favorite girl, Miss Scary Godmother. Say hello to your scary godmother. Fairy Godmother comes when you're about to fall in love and need a dress. Scary Godmother comes when you are scared shitless and need a friend. What I love about Scary Godmother in comparison to Fairy Godmother is Scary Godmother is gonna take you on her broom to her house. This is where you can really start seeing how they made the environments 2D, which actually just on their own look really cool. And then you throw in the CGI characters and then you're like, oh, that looks crazy. This is the most perfect character design for the two main characters in the film. They couldn't have done it better, in my opinion. Very princess outfit, perfect. No notes. Scary Godmother with the striped tights. No notes. What do you think? Homie. So we arrived at Scary Godmother's house, which is beautifully designed, and we are introduced to her roommate, Scully. Oh my, Scary Godmother. Sorry to be so late, but I just had to get these old bones bleached for the party. That man is gay. He's our official skeleton in the closet. Well, ha, it's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Hannah. <laughs> I don't know if the closet metaphor here is also trying to be like a fun play on words, but it's absolutely one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in my life. Does everyone have a skeleton in their closet? Almost everyone, little miss. I have no idea what that means. Chat, any idea what that means? Scully creeps out Hannah so bad she passes out, but it's all fine. Wasn't that supposed to help? Yes! Do you think it worked? Yes. Yes, Scary Godmother being a spinster and living alone, it makes sense. But her having a gay skeleton roommate? Blended. Meanwhile, the big kids are waiting for Hannah to come out of the house screaming and crying, but she isn't. Why don't they go inside? I don't know. Also, not important at all, but Katie and Daryl are in love. And Miss Rulis Joe? Four, three... Kisses. Breaker, breaker, we lost contact with Katie and Daryl. Please advise Houston, over. Although Hannah trusted Scary Godmother enough to go on her broom to her house, she is still scared of monsters. Ah, a monster! 
this is Harry, my least favorite character in this movie, and he's not even a villain. You won't mind if I just sample the delicacies, do you? Ow! No! Down, boy! Last year, you devastated the entire buffet before the other guests even arrived! How dare you, sir! Who is my favorite character, Scully or Bert? It's a tough choice. Door is a jar. Door is a jar. Door is a jar. Honestly, at this point, it's a toss-up. In case you forgot, Hannah is innocent and lovely. We have this music again. <music> Harry is a huge nerd and a massive yapper. The worst kind of person, am I right? <laughs> so Scary Godmother gives him a recipe to get him to shut up. I must know every single line from every single episode. I remember when our fair hair- Here's a treat that's fun to make and helps you get a word in edgewise. Take two of your favorite crackers, spread one with jam, one with peanut butter, mush them together, and jam them into the mouth with a chattering werewolf. Voila! I made the snack. Don't pay attention to this. I'm actually anti-overhead lighting. This doesn't represent me at all, okay? Forget about this. Focus on this. <gasps> I recently acquired salting crackers because I had soup at a restaurant. Call it fate, call it karma. We are now introduced to the vampire family, Count Max, Ruby, and Morrison. Help yourselves to the food. Scary godmother! She rightfully does get scared this time, okay? I'm going to give her a pass because they were preparing to tear her up and eat her. So fair enough that she did get scared of them, but they're chill. They're like, oh, we're not supposed to do that? No problem. Some important Scully and Harry lore is that Harry ruined the party last year because he ate everything and Scully's keeping his eye on him this year. He's kind of stressing out Scully and it's like, can Scully even enjoy his own party because Harry's going to eat everything because he cannot control himself? And Morrison and Hannah decide, let's run around. We're kids, let's run around. And they run into Harry who ends up drinking an entire bottle of something and his mouth gets cleaned so he can talk again. On my first watch of this recently, I was like, oh, poor Harry. He's kind of weird and no one really likes him. Don't think that, okay? Hello, Max. Good evening, Harry. It is nice to see you. Nice to be seen. Oh, Miss Ruby, delightful to see you, my dear. He's creepy towards Ruby, so Max is like, okay, you're going to bed. Harry? Yes, Max? Look deeply into my eyes. Okay. Looking. And hypnotizes him to fall asleep because he won't shut up. Nobody really wants Harry there. But Harry also isn't doing anything to improve the vibes. You know what I mean? Sleep? On an empty stomach? But I... <laughs> this is Bugaboo. He shows up and Hannah starts screaming her head off because he's like actually a monster. So she's kind of like, I don't know if I can do this, guys. <laughs> Bugaboo feels bad that he's scaring her, even though she wasn't initially invited to the party. And this is actually Bugaboo's house. Who are you? I'm Pam. Who are you? I'm the owner of this house. And he calls Hannah a coal miner because <laughs> she has a flashlight. Take that! What are you, a coal miner? I love Bugaboo as well. Maybe I should go. Oh. oh. Not that mean after all. Well, to tell you the truth, monsters aren't mean. I have to note, the proportions here throw me off every time. Bugaboo looks so short. Like he's barely taller than Hannah. How is he this big scary monster? I guess, yeah, he looks kind of scary, but like she could probably box him in a couple of years, you know? <laughs> So the club's jumping a little bit. Well, the party is actually a little small, but the vibes are crazy. It's all about the quality of the people there, not the quantity. Big parties are not always fun. People that can match each other's freaks is always fun. What am I saying? Jimmy and the big kids spent the entire evening waiting for Hannah to come outside. And at this point, that's on you guys. We've got to go in and get Hannah. She's got to be scared to death by now. Look. I'm the leader of this group, and I say we wait. You didn't even go trick-or-treating, which is the whole reason you decided to ditch her. Why did they wait so long to get her? Who made you leader? What do you mean? Of course I'm the leader. That's not fair. We didn't even vote. 
Everyone is fighting and wants to make themselves leader. Eventually, Jimmy manipulates them into making him the leader. This is all rock, no winner. Look, wise guys, nobody is gonna win if we all do rock. Is that clear? Ready? Go! <laughs> And for some reason, Jimmy doesn't want to go into the house. And lucky for us at this point in the movie, Harry is still sleeping. While I was editing, I just noticed that they did this to Harry. And was it nice? No. Did he deserve it? No. Is he still annoying? Yes. So the adults start talking and Scary Godmother compliments Ruby on her dress. I love your dress, Ruby. Move, fangled fashions. I remember when a vampire queen used to look like a queen. <laughs> Me too. Oh, Max, it's just a modern little frog. Too modern and too little for my taste. You can practically see her ankles. She looks like a little hussy tonight, and he is not happy about it. Don't freak out, Max. After all, you can see my ankles. Mine too. That's true friendship. And in their back and forth about the showing of the ankles. One century of these corsets and bustles and the next thing you know, it's platforms and mini skirts. Exactly. <laughs> Max accidentally wakes up Harry. I just noticed that Max has a beautiful set of acrylics on. Okay, Diva. So Max is kind of insecure because he's a little bit out of touch and honestly self-aware king. Yes, he may have some outdated feelings and ideas on stuff because that man is three centuries old. I am simply no good at parties. I feel out of touch and then I get self-conscious. If you want to break the ice, start with a joke. A joke? I think I will try. Max is also at the same time trying to be more open-minded when it comes to more modern things. Ah, all of my precious work, my tarantula egg rolls, my gorgonzola and hoppy's egg quiche, my fleas ear casserole. Oh god. So Harry ate everything and Scully is pissed. And I know that the kids are supposed to be the villains, but Harry is the most annoying character on the planet. First of all, he eats everything after Scary Godmother and Scully were both like, hey, can we chill on eating all of the food? Like, you know, we could share. You don't have to be this ravenous beast. Please control yourself a little bit. And he doesn't. He doesn't even try. Roommate huddle! Now what? The party's just starting and we're out of food. Pizza! Pizza? Pizza? Pizza, Pizza is a groovy idea? I'll order. They know the sound of my voice at Diablo Brothers. Now, who wants garlic? What are you, a maniac? Is he not even aware that the vampires are going to literally pass away if they consume even a lick of garlic? No. I'm like, how well do you actually know each other? The group dynamic here is something I need to explore a little bit. To me, it seems like Scary Godmother knows Harry a little bit, probably from like a work thing or something where she knows him and she feels kind of bad for him because people don't like inviting him to things because he doesn't really know how to adhere to the social norms of not eating all of the food at a party. She seems like a nice lady who would do that. Scully gets pissed that Scary Godmother invites him every single year and he has to continuously deal with Harry's shite. Bugaboo doesn't really seem to care about anything. He seems pretty relaxed. He just wants to make sure everyone's having a good time, right? Seems like the vampire family knows Scary Godmother really well. They only see Harry at the yearly Halloween parties. And I think they usually try to avoid him at these Halloween parties. Probably said something really weird towards Ruby at one point, and I'm assuming based on the kissing of the arm that he did. I think the garlic thing was probably the last straw <laughs> with the vampire family. And you know what? If there are any Harry defenders out there, please put your defenses in the comments below and I'd be happy to read them through and rethink my opinion on Harry. You eat pizza with cheese and olives? Yeah, I like olives, so? I thought monsters ate little girls. Oh, that's silly. Little girls make the crust all soggy. Bugaboo and Hannah have this little bonding moment over cheese and olive pizza, which I've recently actually come to know that as a really delicious combination on pizza as well. So I'm kind of feel like I'm bonding with them a little bit which is kind of fun. Harry breaks the bonding moment, but also the fourth wall here. If I went around eating all the clients, I'd be out of work. Who told you that bunch of nonsense? My cousin Jimmy. Ahem. Well, I'm sure this Jimmy slash monster discussion is imperative to the plot. Oh, can we get back to something that is really important? Like ordering pizza? 
I have to say, I love when the fourth wall is broken, especially in like a creepy, silly Halloween -y movie. And I'm mainly just referencing the Scream movies because I've been obsessed with watching all of them. And the fourth wall is broken all the time in those movies. The concluding chapter of a trilogy. trilogy. That's right. It's a rarity in the horror field, but it does exist. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I can't believe we left Hannah in the spook house. We've got to save Hannah from the monsters. You save Hannah. I'm driving my SUV out of here before the monsters show up. Because Hannah has taken so long to leave the house, the kids are too scared to go into the house. And now the pizza that Harry ordered is delivered. Oh, here's your order, scary godmother. That'll be $197. Back in 2004, almost $200 adjusted for inflation. That's probably $2,000 now. Scary Godmother's like, I don't have that kind of money. You could owe for it. Uh, no. Sorry. My soul is worth more than 12 pizzas. Scully, do you have that kind of money? No, I left it in my other pelvis. She's like, Harry, you ordered all these pizzas. Where's your money? Wallet empty. <laughs> You ate all of the food, you order 12 pizzas, and then you don't have any money to pay for any of it. So they're like, mm, Bugaboo might have some dollar bills stuck to him, and they found enough money, luckily, to pay for the pizza. Scary Godmother loses her mind, finally, on Harry. You! You have wrecked my snack table, insulted my roommate, made a mess of my house, and stuck me for 12 pizzas. Harry? Sometimes you are insensitive, boorish, and you just have plain lousy table manners. Someone needed to. Remember when Ruby told Max that she should come? Wait, Max and Ruby, dude? There is no such thing as a coincidence. Remember when Ruby told Max that he should tell a joke to everyone to break the ice? He finally has his joke. So other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how did you enjoy the show? Yeah, he did just make a Lincoln assassination joke in a 2004 Halloween special on Cartoon Network. I obviously did not understand this joke as a child, but I did see the clip of this joke. I think it was in 2020, and I think about it all the time. We also learned that Jimmy is on Bugaboo's route of scaring kids. I have a plan. As leader, I order you guys to go in there and bring out the baby. Jimmy was projecting a lot onto Hannah about being scared of monsters, I see. Okay. Scary Godmother and all of her friends realized that Jimmy was trying to mess with Hannah, and they're not happy about it. Where is Jimmy now? Waiting for me, I guess. Well, his wait is just about over. I think it's time we taught those big kids a lesson. Here's the plan. A little plan of revenge on Jimmy. So they head back to the abandoned house. Just perfect timing because Jimmy and the big kids all decide they're brave enough to walk inside this abandoned house and find Hannah. They find Morrison inside. Who the heck are you? I'm Morrison. I'm a vampire. I'm Jimmy. I'm the devil. Happy Halloween. Hey, have you seen a little kid dressed like a dumb fairy princess probably bawling her eyes out like a big baby? Fairy wings? Gold crown? Pink dress? Yeah! yeah. Nope. Aww. Jimmy decides, I'm gonna bully this kid. Aw, he ain't no vampire. He's just another dorky kid someone else dared to go into the spook house. Am I right? <laughs> just for the record, I think you're a real vampire. And Morrison's like, I'm gonna get my parents. Jimmy's like, okay, I don't care. Morrison's parents, of course, are vampires. And the gang does a really good job of scaring everyone. <laughs> Harry, of course, had to be so annoying about it. Uh, candy! <laughs> Before they reach the safety of the basement. They scared the big kids into the basement where Bugaboo is waiting. <gasps> and Hannah's there to rescue them. And it's so cute. No, not the life of a little lamp. I cannot stand it. I'm guilty. 
and she saves the day. And Harry is also just giving a little bit of repressed theater kid now that I'm looking at him. Just too much for me and my pithy soul. The light burns. It burns worse than the worst burn ever. Oh, mercy me. Is this the end of poor Harry? It seems so. Goodbye, mother. I think Harry's a little jealous of Scully because Scully's an entertainer at heart. And I think Harry really wants to be, but he's not good at it. And maybe he eats all of the food on Scully as a way of emotional revenge. Who's to say? So they succeed in scaring all the big kids and Hannah has to say goodbye to all of her besties. But Scary Godmother gives her a key that Hannah can use any time that she wants to see her, which I believe would open us up to the sequel of this. I don't know. I don't know if I've actually ever seen the sequel of this movie. I love Soon. I can do it Any pizza left? What? No, it's hungry work. I built up quite an appetite. It's not easy scaring people, you know. Oh, no, 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 please. And we have the ending of one of the greatest fever dream films of all time. Some of you have seen some of my favorite letterbox reviews from this movie. I say some of you because those are probably the people who are subscribed and have turned on their notifications so they can see when I post. Thank you guys so much for watching. Love you so much. And I'll see you again soon.